Because, well, things are pretty quiet, shall we say, here at the moment in the UK, mostly because, well, everyone's on holiday. <laughs> We've got to look across the pond to have a look at what, what's going on. Is there anything interesting happening? And at the moment, well, especially for the past two weeks or so, you have probably heard of a guy called Oliver Anthony and his song, Rich Men North of Richmond. And this has been very much stirred by, uh, as people have said, oh, it's the lyrics, it's capturing the moment of our time. But the reality is, it's nothing of the sort. This entire song has been astroturfed by very, very big right-wing influencers, by even Fox News. They were even playing it. In the opening of of the Republican debates. So, of course, everyone is hearing this song in America constantly. And that is why it is top of the charts. A lot of people have put a lot of money into this. Now, Oliver Anthony, uh, he has come out and said that, oh, no, that's that's not going to happen. It's, it's all down to his music. And to be fair to the guy, I'm not a, a country singer. I'm not a... Uh, you know, skilled musician, but he's certainly more skilled th than I am. He doesn't seem to be that bad a singer, to be honest, in my estimations. But ultimately, he was astroturfed by the right. And he's even come out recently and said, oh, that's not what happened. Um, you know, I actually disagree with these uh, conservatives. But this is because, and we'll exp probably explain later on, um, in fact, I've just done a video next, uh, for next, uh, tomorrow, actually, about the fact that there is this sense of the old conservatism that we all used to knew is, is, is dying, and something new is emerging. Now, we don't know yet what that might be. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't go, well, a bit fash, shall we say, <laughs> and uh, start, you know... Um, engaging in those tendencies uh we hope we hopefully it will not go that way um but there is something new coming from this and i think that is more what this song has spoken to and i think you have to ask the question could something similar could there be a very similar song that could happen just as richmond north of richmond did to encapsulate the times and catapult itself to instant stardom for whoever just happens to do that. Well, before we do get into that, of course, a brief spoiler to reel you in to watch the rest of the video, what if I were to tell you that this has actually already happened and it wasn't a, a country western song or, or a pop song or, or anything like that. No, it was a TV show. But before we do get into this, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and an official link called Buy Me Coffee, Wake You Well, Buy Me Coffee. And of course, as always, there is the YouTube thank you button and the Pony Club down below as well. So, cast your minds back to the Blair years. Things were, by all in all, pretty good. Certainly a lot better than they were today. Were the problems? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, the Blair years were far from perfect, but compare them to now, huge improvement. Huge improvement. The Blair years, massively improvement. Why was this? Well, Tony Blair realized that he had to, in order to win, get the centrists on board. We know full well that you look at the voting tensions of the UK and you've got 25% who say they're on the right, 25% who say they're on the left, and then this massive block in the middle of over 30 to 35%, depending on which poll you look at at the time, says they're centrists. They, they don't feel that they they belong on the right wing, they don't feel belong on the left wing, they, they're, they're just centrists. And any, any fight at a, a, a general election is for how many centrists you can win over. Like it or not, that's just the state of our politics. And 
Corbyn's election proved that. Corbyn stood in 2017 on essentially the borrowed manifesto of uh, Ed Miliband because he didn't have time to write his own. And then in 2019, he puts out his own manifesto, which was an absolute complete mess and effectively scared away most of the, the centrists who, who might vote for him. Even his own traditional Labour voters did not vote for him because they felt he was too socialist. Some would even say he was a bit of a communist. And trust me, I've heard that said in my own hometown up here in the north. So what caused ultimately this change? Well, of course, we have to go back to the 2008 financial crash. And at the time, there was a real sense that it was people on welfare who were the cause of our of our problem. It's all these people on welfare. This is this is the big problem. Look how much they're spending. Of course, it, it's it's not true now, and it certainly wasn't true then. If anything, we always spend when you look at sort of welfare payments. Who gets the biggest share of these welfare payments? Well, it's pensioners. But of course, the Conservatives don't touch that with a barge pole because who votes for the Conservatives? Well, it tends to be uh, old people. <laughs> so you can't can't talk, should we say? about pensioners. But people on benefits, well, they were free game. And it wasn't just them. It was the right wing going over and over, writing sensationalist story after sensationalist story again and again and again. And then, unfortunately, along came Channel 4 with a little program called Benefit Street. And oh my word, Benefit Street turned into pure poverty porn. This exemplified the very, very extreme worst aspects of all those stories that the right wing had been writing for years, saying that those weren't just fringe cases. No, Benefit Street shows that actually that's the norm. There's all these lazy layabouts, you know, working off your money. You know, that's why the conservatives have got to come in and, and put an end to all this. And ultimately, that's the, the direction that they went. David Cameron went in that direction. And, of course, William Haig came in and brought in, um, not, not, Ian, not William Haig, uh, Ian Duncan Smith came in, uh, introduced universal credit, which, again, Labour was experimenting with at the time. They knew the problems that it was going to bring. They put the programme on pause, pause because of, um, well, they knew there was a general election coming, so they put it on pause and said, we'll, we'll deal with it after. William uh, Ian Duncan Smith comes in and goes, yes, that program looks perfect. Meanwhile, there were a ton of problems. And if you want a perfect example, you can look up the graphs at the time of people and areas that were on the old system versus areas that were being brought into universal credit. And you can see food poverty, and the use of food banks skyrocket. And you had areas that they didn't have universal credit versus where they did. And people have now really come to realize that, actually, no, that, that wasn't the problem. You actually need to invest in these areas. And even in Richmond, north of Richmond, they, the, 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 well, the, the musician Oliver Anthony actually has a go at people on welfare. So it hasn't changed this idea that, you know, it's people on welfare who are the problems, you know, they're just too lazy to work. But if you really look into the problem that these people on Benefit Street were facing, well, what was it? It was a lack of investment, a lack of opportunities, a, a lack of, in some cases, public transport being able to get to jobs. There were a myriad of problems that unfortunately were just not being solved and were being swept under the rug because, well, for the great many, things were all right. And so these, uh, should we say, fringe issues could be quietly swept under the rug and every so often the Daily Mail could could just, you know, go through these cases like with a, a fine tooth comb and pick out the most extreme examples of uh of cases. And I feel that that's certainly what 
uh, Oliver Anthony in Richmond North of Richmond has has done as well in in his song, um, saying that you know, oh well, if these people are over a certain weight, well, you shouldn't get any uh, any help from the government. So could there be a UK version of Rich Men North of Richmond? Well, it's entirely possible there could very well be. Wouldn't surprise me if someone right now is 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 putting pen to paper to try and uh, do something very similar. But here's the thing. It's already happened. And it wasn't a, a country western song. It wasn't a pop song or anything like that. It was a TV show called Benefit Street. And like it or not, unfortunately, though those attitudes have done a lot of damage because it was those attitudes, that selling of it was people on benefits who were the, the big problem in the UK when, again, it wasn't, was what sold austerity to a lot of people. And that's something we've really got to learn to understand that now we are sort of living with the consequences of austerity. And we have to reverse this. We have to go back and we have to invest because that is how we really solve this problem. We have to invest in the UK. We have to invest in people. and We have to invest in these areas and to help these people. Because guess what? The rising tide can lift all boats. Your taxes might go up a bit, but in the long run, it's going to be a massive more benefit for the UK. And especially as the Conservatives love to remind us, we live in such a wealthy country. But all that wealth is sucked away into, well, very much the, the Southeast. It's about time we had a very significant rebalance uh, of these. Jeremy Corbyn was right in that regard. As was Ed Miliband to bring out a point. And even Keir Starmer. But hey, people just ignore when he says it, right? So, as always, thank you very much uh, for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.